I come to self-help then as this naive, <laughs> or, you know, naive uh, burgeoning scholar who's very excited to interview Sister Karen. And um, when you when you used to go up to the offices. Uh, Sister Karen, there used to be this big round table you would enter, and there would be this big round table in that first room, and she'd be sitting on her couch, and everyone would just come to the table and talk to her. That's how she conducted business. She was very casual. Um, but she was uh, very much, uh, didn't hold her tongue. Like, she would tell artists, you know, you're either, I don't know if she used the word bullshit, but she would call it bullshit. <laughs> you know, like, no, you, no, you didn't really think about this or that, you know, in terms of the image. And a lot of artists really became better because you had that honest critique, right? Um, but she was very informal in conducting business. She did not like the whole, like, I need to meet you, I need to get your money, you know. She, she would send someone else to do that. That was Tomas's job. He was a grab writer. Um, so when I came to meet Sister Karen, you know, like many other students before me, undergrad and graduate, who are all excited about self-help graphics, um, she would just give us time. So I actually got to sit down and interview her and just ask her these different questions. And the piece that you guys most likely read was one of the first articles I wrote on self-help graphics. Mm -hmm. It's from um, um, actually, it was published before that in a book called Latinos and Museums by Antonio Rios Justamente. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. He actually, yeah, when I was in Arizona. So <laughs> that's, that's great. So that article you, that you read on Sun was actually, there was a different incarnation of it. Um, and, and so as I'm organizing these artists exchange between Arizona and LA, um, she, she did get to read my, um, my pieces. And, um, you know, she didn't agree with me. She didn't agree with me on this one point. And, and this is pivotal because she's, she's a nun, right? It's about, um, it's about not this, this vow of poverty, but it's really about, it's not about the money, okay? And that the reason that the Arteyer program um, why she even established it wasn't about making money off these artists. Now at the time that she's organizing this, and this is why she and I differ in our opinions, and why I wrote this in the article, is that the first artist she invites to do this special project, the very first one, is Gronk. And at the time, Gronk was represented by a gallery out in the west side, and was doing really well with, you know, Osco was still somewhat around, but really he is, like, broke out on his own. He broke out on his own before Patsy and Harry did. And my theory was that she did that to get, make sure she had not only an established artist, but to get the money, you know? Because this will set now the, the, the level of the caliber of artists that we want to participate in the Atayet, right? And to really establish the silk screen as a fine art print. That was my argument. And then we see the success of many of these artists, and you can track it back to the Atayet. Those who participated in the Atayet, you can track their artistic career and how it developed. Well, this was her, literally her bone of contention with me. She didn't agree with me. Because I called to light that this could be possibly a motivation, right? Um, and if it wasn't a motivation, it ended up being the result of, because more money did come. Um, and to this day, that is actually a lot of artists, you know, would have a disagreement with um, with how self-help graphics would price the print and the value of the print. Right? Um, Can you give an example? Yeah. You don't have to name names, but just I don't know. That's that's a good question. Um, like, let's just say, well, self-help graphics for their annual print sale sets a base price, um, you know, it could be a print is 100, a print is 200, or what have you. But let's say you have someone like um, a Judy Baca doing a print like she did like two or three years ago. Um, yeah, you sell that print for $200, it's going to go like this. But you're also not setting the value of what that print is really worth.
And this is not to say that you need to set it at an extreme, you know, at market value, but at least somewhere in between, right? To honor the work of the artist, but also to really, you know, honor the collector who's like, oh yeah, I have this Judy Walker print in my collection. Um, and so, so that question about money was just a little iffy. Um, I was already back in LA. Um, I had filed my thesis, I'd graduated, and while I was back in LA, I was at, at Spark, Social Public Art Research Center. And, um, and I remember we were all there, and somehow we got the phone call that Sister Karen had died during the night. And it was the most unexpected thing, because I literally saw her the week before. I literally saw her the week before. And that's when she had her book. That's when she was like, you know, Reina. And I was like, I don't know, I totally understand, I totally respect it, you know, let's just agree and disagree. Um, and that was among our last conversations, you know. And, but yeah, I literally started the week before. And so to find out that she had died, it was just, I, I didn't know what to do with myself. I really didn't. You know, it was, I was in shock. It really was. Um, and I remember that at the funeral, Damas made it a point to just give me a big hug and be like, you know, she really respected you for the work that you did. Because I guess at that time, I, and I had thought other people had already written about self graphics. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, you know, actually I hadn't even checked, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, but at the time when I was doing the work, I guess very few pieces really got out in terms of in our historical context to really talk about sample graphics in that way, to really focus on the artist, to really focus on the production. So, um, so you know, to this day, you know, I still, I still, I'm appreciative of the opportunity, and this is why we do the work that we do. You know, it's not to build my name, but it's to really get out there the work that um, has been done.